It's rained here just about every day for the past couple weeks, which unfortunately has been great for the slugs in our garden. Their damage is more evident now than it was earlier this month, and among other things, they've wreaked havoc on our sea kale. This got me thinking about testing possible slug deterrents, much like I did a couple of weeks ago in my video, Do Coffee Grounds Deter Slugs? This time I thought I'd test food grade diatomaceous earth, which is reported to be a slug deterrent. Its abrasiveness is said to irritate slugs and cause them to look for food elsewhere. Though food grade diatomaceous earth is not harmful to beneficial soil organisms, including earthworms, it can be harmful to bees. So my intention here is to attempt to test its effectiveness as a slug deterrent, not to advocate its use. As with the coffee ground test, this experiment was conducted in a plastic bin. The bin was placed under lights in my grow room to ensure a uniform light source, which helped avoid any unintended influence of inconsistent lighting on the behavior of the slugs. I placed a couple inches of soil in the bottom of the bin and then covered half the soil with diatomaceous earth. I put a small piece of cardboard in the middle of the bin and placed seven slugs on it. The cardboard acted as a neutral starting point for the test. I then ran four consecutive 10 minute tests and recorded the number of trips taken across the soil versus those across the diatomaceous earth. If a slug started over the diatomaceous earth but then turned back to the cardboard or the soil, I didn't count it as a trip across the diatomaceous earth. For the remainder of this video, to keep myself from getting tongue tied, I'll refer to diatomaceous earth as DE. In the first test, three slugs set off fairly quickly over the soil while two headed over the DE. A third slug began to move through DE, but we'll see in a moment that it later turned to travel over the soil. The last slug on the cardboard looked like it might head into the DE, but instead took a right turn and went into the soil. Here you can see the slug I mentioned earlier, after it turned to travel over soil rather than DE. Also note how the two slugs that did travel over the DE didn't go very far. So at the end of test one, Five slugs traveled over the soil and two over DE. Before starting test two, I rotated the bin 180 degrees. I did this in response to viewer feedback from my last experiment, just to rule out the possibility that slugs might prefer traveling in one direction over another. I placed the slugs on the cardboard starting platform and they were off. Two slugs led the way over the soil, followed by one slug over the DE and a third over the soil. The smallest of the slugs thought about moving into the DE, but instead retreated to neutral ground where it remained for the rest of the 10 minute test, along with two slugs that never left the cardboard. So at the end of test two, there were eight trips over soil and three over DE. To begin test three, once again the bin was rotated 180 degrees and the slugs were placed on the cardboard. It soon became clear that the slugs had lost interest in the experiment. One ventured into the DE but thought twice about it and returned to the cardboard. Finally, one slug committed to a trip across the soil, while another moved tentatively into the DE but appeared to be heading for the soil as the 10 minute test ended. The rest stayed put on the cardboard for the entire test. So for test three, there was one trip across the soil, but since the first slug to venture into the DE turned back to the cardboard and the second slug was heading for the soil as the test concluded, I'll count zero trips across DE for this round, bringing our totals to nine trips over soil and three over the DE. After rotating the bin again, we were ready for test four. Two of those slugs led the way into the soil, while a third waited until nearly the end of the test to join them. The rest of the slugs appeared to be on strike and remained on the cardboard throughout. That brings our totals to 12 trips across the soil and three over the DE. So it does appear that slugs would rather move over soil than diatomaceous earth, and DE is likely effective as a slug deterrent. It's important to note, however, that it loses its effectiveness after a heavy rain and would have to be reapplied afterwards. When using DE as a slug deterrent, make sure to apply it directly to the soil and away from flowering plants, which will help ensure that it doesn't harm bees. Also, make sure to wear a dust mask to protect your lungs. After this initial test of DE, I personally don't plan to use it in my garden on an ongoing basis. To keep slugs at bay, I rely mostly on manual control and an inexpensive homemade concoction that works like a beer trap, which I hope to share with you in a future video. Well, that's all for now. 
Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, remember, you can change the world one yard at a time.